Hello, good evening. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Nice. Welcome to the class. How are you tonight? <laughs> Very good. How was the weekend? Did you get wet in the rain? Everything was good. Did you rest? I rest in my house. <laughs> Very good. That's the best way to, to do it, right? Okay. So it's a pleasure to be with you tonight. And uh, we're going to start with a little exercise. This is going to be very easy, okay? Uh, for you to analyze and participate. I want you to think and then tell the class, why are you studying, studying English? Uh, why, what do you want to achieve? What are you going to do when we finish all the classes? So I'm going to give you a few minutes for you to think what you are going to say, and then you are going to tell to the class, why are you studying English, okay? Uh, do you have any questions about the activity? It only seems about what I do uh, for studying English. Yeah, why are you studying English? What do you want to do after you finish the classes? Okay, okay. Very good, so I'm gonna give you a few minutes if you have questions, let me know. Because I will be here. Hi. Hello, how are you? What is the question, teacher? Fine, Hi, thank you. you. I'm very well, thank you for asking. Uh, well, uh, the question is, why are you studying English? What do you want to achieve when you finish your English class? So uh, think about what, what you are going to say to the class, and then after a few minutes, uh, you are going to tell the class, why are you studying English? Okay. Thank you. Good, good. It's a pleasure. Okay, did you finish or do you need more time? For me, I finished. <laughs> I okay. finished. Very well. So who wants to be the first one to tell the class? A volunteer. Me? Very good. So let's listen uh, to our partner here. Uh, she's going to tell us why are you starting? Just tell us, please. Uh, for me, it is something I always wanted to wanted to do. 
uh, wanting to learn, but did not have the time to study. And now online, it is easy because I do not need to travel a place. Okay, very good. So you think it's more convenient to have the class online than to go to a place? Yes. I studied English maybe 20 years ago, but I never finished. And I tried to study again maybe uh, eight years ago, and I can because I can I can I couldn't go oh, oh, I couldn't take the class uh, presential. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult to go to a place every every day or every Saturday. It's, it's, very, difficult. it's very difficult for the job. Yeah, definitely. You're tired. and This is very good because you go home and you are at home, you're doing some things, but you are in class, right? Uh, sometimes online, online is difficult because sometimes we have to work. Yeah, you're right. But that's why I was telling you in the first class that if you have an activity, the only thing that you have to do is to connect to the class and, and tell there in the chat, uh, I'm, I will be working and everything is fine, right? But uh, it's at least a solution, right? We have a solution. Mm -hmm. And what do you want to do when you finish the classes? I mean, you are going to travel or you want to get another job? I I have traveled many times in but I I couldn't talk. <laughs> maybe because maybe maybe this is the reason that I I want to to want to learn to speak English. Yeah, that is very good. So the next time that you travel, when you finish the classes, you are going to speak in English with everybody there. And I have lost many opportunities of the job for for not to. To, to know English. Well, this is the chance then. If you finish this time, everything will be fine. Yes, but uh, it's, not, it's not the same. It's not the same because uh, I think it's, uh, it's uh, se le saca más provecho you when, you are, when, when you are young for job. Well, probably you're right, but it's never too late. You know, sometimes, I mean, once you have the chance, it's, it's your opportunity. So that will be it. Yes. Very good. Perfect. Thank you for sharing. Who wants to do the next one? Me, teacher. Okay, go ahead, please. Okay. Uh, for me, I study English because I need to improve the way. I communicate in my workplace because in my workplace I I I know uh, American people. I I I yes I, I I talk with American people and I need to I need to bear this, my skills the skills for learn English. Ah, very interesting. And do you speak in English with them by now? Sorry? Sorry? Uh, sorry, teacher. Uh, yeah, do you speak in English already with these American people? Yes, yes. Where, 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 is, where is necessary, I, I speak. Mm -hmm. Okay, very interesting. How long have you worked in this place? Um, Five years ago. But uh, in the two first years, I worked as a driver. It's not, it was not very necessary the English. In my new job, new job three years ago is is necessary. <laughs> okay, very good. So you said that you were a writer. Uh, sorry. So you say that you were a writer. Driver. Uh, ah, driver. Name. Okay. I oh, hear sorry. another word. Mm -hmm. ah, okay. <laughs> yes. Oh, my, my, my actual my actual work is uh, 
air marshaler. This is a, a air a base. How say? Air air base. Oh, in my I I received the the airplane where he landed, where they landed, and I. Okay. I am the first person who the the pilot see at the at the base. And in I, my that is very interesting. <laughs> and I I I I I say we're parking the airplane. Ah, okay, mm -hmm. interesting. Uh, so you work at the airport? Uh, near to airport. It's a, it's a private base. Ah, okay. Air, it's, it's, it's a private private air base. Mm -hmm. mm, okay, interesting. Very good. Nice. Thank you for sharing, Daniel. It's very good that you are using English already. <laughs> Perfect. Who wants to be the next one? Me, teacher. Okay. Um, teacher, I'm studying English because I think it's a helpful tool in the work and you can apply to better position, I think, in, in this country or abroad. And you can use it in the life for common situations like um, listen to music or watch some movies, read some articles in the web pages. Besides, I think it's important when you travel, you can read and understand the indications and, and you, you're not lost at all if you can, can communicate with other people. So they, they, the people can help you or you can help another people in in this kind of situation, I, I think. You are muted. Okay, thank you. you that is very interesting and you are very right. I mean, uh, whenever you are traveling, whenever you are... Uh, with different cultures, different people, understanding and helping each other is a very important part. And the good thing is that you are using that right, sir. That is interesting. Nice. Who wants to be the next one? Anybody? In teacher. Okay, Fatima, go ahead. I want to study English because I need to talk and learn more English for a for a new a new a new job into my company. New position the best okay. position and for this i need to talk english because uh, the organization is is the iron man and ha has relationship with united states and other countries Okay, very interesting, very good. So, uh, yes, I, I have had a lot of students from Ironman. They are very interesting, it's a very good job. And I know that there is there are a lot of opportunities. There, so, and uh, have you, do you use English for your work already? Already is a little, not too much. No, I don't talk with other people in English right mm. now. Very good. So whenever you have the chance, I guess it's the good opportunity for you to, to start. Very nice. Very good. Thank you, Fatima, for sharing. Anybody else wants to share? Teacher. 
teacher. Ah, the, ah okay, go ahead. Uh, and my work is not, it's not, I think it's not necessary to speak a lot English because with me in my work, I, I talk with a per, rural person, like a, a farmer, you know, <laughs> and they maybe not speak a lot English, maybe a, a few, only a two or three words. But I think we, if I want, um, ¿cómo sería? Incrementar, eh, to increase. Eh, get a best, a high okay. increase, or get be a best, best job, uh, I think it's necessary to speak, speak English very well, to speak, understand, and write eh, English. Uh, like another partner, eh, it's necessary to speak English because when uh, when the people uh, can speak two language, maybe get a better better opportunity. Um, if I only one language, Spanish, like me, uh, maybe um, ¿cómo sería? Escapar lost lost opportunities. Maybe uh, ah. My dream, my my dream is a uh, work in FAO or uh, PNUMA. Uh, I don't know. Maybe with uh, if I can speak uh, English, maybe I can get a uh, fish, <laughs> another opportunity. Uh, I, uh, uh, it's necessary and not only for for Joe. Maybe uh, uh, if I take opportunity for travel another country, uh, maybe it's possible uh, talk with another people. No, the el pensamiento cómo sería knowledge. No knowledge es conocimiento. Yeah. The way of thinking. Aha, uh -huh. a different way for it, of think. I think that teacher. Thank okay. you. Okay. Very good. Perfect. Thank you. That is interesting because sometimes, yeah, there are lots of opportunities and we have to be ready, right? And uh, of course, if you meet other people, English is the best way for you to communicate and know other cultures, other, uh, have other inter relationship, let's say, with other people. Good. Anybody else wants to share? Me. Hi. And, and the company, uh, they want that all the people have a high level of English. So all the years, uh, they send us uh, an exam to evaluate what is the level. Um, and we have to do a, a program uh, of the study to... Um, to send that we are studying English. That, that is the reason why I am studying English. And because I I like, I would like to learn other idioms too. Very good, interesting, very nice. And in the last evaluation, what was your level? It was in, uh, intermediate, but uh, what is? Uh, low intermediate. Ah, okay, very good. Uh -huh. Very nice. That's good. So you're getting to that one. That's very nice. Perfect. And of course, other languages are very good as well. Thank you for sharing. And uh, now, Holma. Hi. Hello. Uh, well, uh, in my case, uh, I love I love English so. I, I think I I I like the American culture uh, because I love the the music. I have have uh, I, uh, for example, I I like the 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 American music, the UK music. Uh, I I I I like the music, but 
is is a influence for me the the sport I mean the the sport I practice a uh, sport is originary uh, from United States so I think I like the culture so be, because for the 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 music the the company the brand brands company the the difference uh, different things uh, 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 who, uh, however uh, i i think it's very important it's very important because um, you can have more opportunities you you can open more doors in your life uh it's good for me it's, it's good for me and i want i i would like to 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 work with 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 english uh, not just uh learn and 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 know so uh, I I would like to to work with with English, and uh, I like I like it. it's it's very interesting. It's very interesting. I think it's it's fundamental. Is 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 important now. Perfect. Thank you, Holman. So definitely, it's very imp uh, important. Which sport is the one that you practice? Skateboarding. Ah, okay yeah i remember you say that one very good so that is nice yeah i heard uh -huh. that it's in salvador that it's going to be like a tournament for that one these holidays yes, i like so it's a it's the it's the it's the reason because it's american culture so yeah i am i am salvadorian but i am latino but i i like i like the, the american culture because i have a big influ influence in my in my in my infancy infancia I don't remember how can I say your childhood in your in your childhood yes and yes very good perfect actually I believe that uh yeah the American culture is has influenced everybody right because we watch movies TV shows music there are a lot of things in English that are around us. And it's very good, you know, when you are watching a movie, for example, and you understand what they're saying. And then you realize, for example, that the words, the subtitles sometimes are not correct, right? You say, ah, he didn't say that. So that is a very, very, very interesting. Thanks. Good, perfect. Any other person wants to share? Okay, so as you can see, uh, everybody has different motivations to be here, right? So the important part is to move on to practice. When you come to the class, try to speak, try to to participate, so that is going to be good for you. And if you have questions, remember that you can ask me here or you can ask also in the, um, in the chat. So that will be it. Uh, we're going to check the attendance because we haven't. So let's see. Christian Alexander Arevalo Delgado. Mm, that's kind of strange. Uh, Daniel Antonio Luna. Present, teacher. Good. Daniel Arquímedes Florentino Garcia. Present. Good. Erika Yasmin Martinez Carpio. Present. Good. Fátima Denise Aguilar Márquez. Present. Good. Herman Alexander Durán Linares. Héctor Francisco Morales Rico. Present, teacher. Good. Iván Petrovich Guzmán Aquino. Present. Good. Eh, Jamie Raquel Escobar Alfaro. Present. Good. Holman Saúl Giron Sánchez. Present. Good. 
José Alberto Baños Hernández. Cara Lorena Leiva Contreras. Present. Good. Kenia Cecilia Ruiz Morán. Present. Good. Lucy Natalie Juárez de Ramírez. Present. Good. Manuel Antonio Escamilla Jurado. Nelson Antonio Herrodas González. Good. Osvin Alexis Flores Hernández. Samantha Marisol Campos Flamenco. Present. Good. Solma Janet Ramírez Avalos. Present. Good. Vanessa Noemí Reyes Lemos. Present. Good. En David Alexander Rodríguez Sánchez. Okay, now you are in a different order. <laughs> yeah, I have to remember who was the, the one that were in the in the uh, I mean in the one one. So it's all right now. Okay, so we're going to check about the platform. I know that some of you you have a, a few questions about this. So let me just check about that one. Hold on a second. Okay, for this one, sometimes there are two answers, okay? So I'm going to show you one of the answers and then let's see if that is the one that you have. But let me do it very quickly because I haven't done that yet. Um, let me see. Yeah, it's the exercise where you need to enter the, the information. As I was telling you, sometimes what happens is that uh, a little thing that you don't enter or a symbol or a space is going to give you problems with this kind of exercise in the box. So I believe that maybe in other modules, you have the experience. Right? So let me just finish here. So we can check. Okay, I got it. So this is the homework 1.3. I have problems in the 1.3 exercise three. Okay, that's I, the one that we're gonna check. Yeah, I try uh, a lot. Maybe you message you know me. No, it doesn't work. Sometimes that happens, I don't worry. Okay, let's check all the exercise, okay? For the first one, uh, okay, it says type sentences using the relative pronoun who, add the missing words, and conjugate the verbs correct. And we have the prompts, a general contractor, and to ye provide materials for labor. This is actually an exercise that we did before, right? So on the number one, it has to be a general contractor is an employee who, that is very important, who provides with S, who provides materials for labor, period. That is very important. Any questions with the first one? No. Okay, number two, it says premium users are, this is very important, are people who upgraded in password. Upgraded to platinum services, period. Any questions with number two? No. Okay, let's check number three. An autocratic manager is someone who mm -hmm. makes with S. Is it someone mm -hmm. who? Uh, yeah, I guess the, the someone was missing here, but anyways, it's someone who makes decisions alone. Period. Someone with is an the designer or someone someone. Someone. Okay. Someone mm -hmm. who makes make with S to make. Alone. Okay. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Very good. Yes. Let's check number four. Ah, it's a pleasure. 
Number four says chaotic managers are people who give total control to their subordinates, period. And the last one, number five says, a CEO is an important person who makes major corporate decisions and period. And that is the exercise. Do you have any questions about the exercise? Anybody? No, teacher, thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Okay, and this is the class. No, this is yesterday's class, uh, Friday. This is the class of today. Describe leadership traits uh, in management. And here we have the exercise. You just need to click on the correct option depending on the on the grammar. That's the only thing. Perfect. Please remember to move on with the platform. It's very Sorry, important. teacher. Can you repeat the homework one? One, three. Okay, all of them or or just, uh, you have a particular one that I want you to, to know. The first. Okay, the first one is, a general contractor is an employee who provides with S materials for labor, period. Okay, uh, any other that you want to check? Or do you have a question about this? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think it's red. It's fine. Yes. Okay, perfect. That will be it. Anyways, if you have questions, you can watch the video and you will be able to see that again. Okay, so we're going to watch a little video here. And as usual with the videos, oh, well, let me check if you are able to listen. Sometimes it's not possible. Yeah, yeah, I need to enable something. Okay, as usual, we're going to watch the video and then you are going to provide comments, opinion, or what you understood on the videos. Whenever we watch a video, remember that we have to check pronunciation, your vocabulary, many things that we can check, okay? So I will uh, play the video and you please check into that one. Hi, I'm Lex Sisney. I'm a CEO coach at Organizational Physics. What's your management style and how does it relate to other styles? It's a million dollar question because management styles are all around us. Each of us must manage our relationships, our activities in the world around us. And what you'll notice is that each of us has developed a unique style in how we go about managing things. One way to conceptualize a management style is to understand that each of us must have this balance. Sometimes we've got to drive forward change. And other times we have to respond to change. And sometimes we're focused on the big picture. And other times we're focused on the tasks and the parts that make up the system that we're managing. Each of us has learned to kind of shape and respond to the environment and focus on the big picture and focus on the parts in a unique way. And there's some pattern recognition that we can do. If your style tends to be focused on what's happening right now and getting the task accomplished and driving hard to get things done and you thrive on winning and achieving victory and fighting through obstacles, we call that the producer style. You're really good at focusing on what needs to get done and getting it done. On the other hand, if you are better at responding to change and make things orderly and efficient and controllable and high quality, you're focused on how to do things the right way, we call that the stabilizer style. On the other hand, if you get excited about creating disruptive change and being creative and finding those creative solutions to complicated problems and disrupting the status quo, we call that the innovator style. You're really good at being disruptive and creative and finding those creative solutions. But if you're better at responding to change and keeping everyone working well together, harmony and coalescing the team and working well as a unit, we call that the unifier style. You're really good at helping the team respond to change and work well together. Each of us has some mix of those styles. Right? And you can think about your life this past week. Did you spend most of your time 
producing, trying to accomplish the daily, weekly work? Or did you spend most of your time trying to bring order out of chaos? Or most of your time and energy trying to disrupt the status quo? Or most of your time and energy trying to keep everyone on the same page? I want you to notice that some of those styles come more naturally to you. They're more additive to you. And if you find that you're spending most of your time out of your natural style, it will cost you job happiness, productivity, and satisfaction. So the secret to having more productivity and happiness in yourself and others is to recognize what style comes naturally to you and complement yourself with others who are stronger where you're weak. One thing you can do to help others understand their own style is to give the force what it needs. Here's what I mean by that. Imagine that you're sitting in your office and an employee comes in and this person is moving at a fast pace. They're feeling frustrated because there's obstacles. Well, that's the producing force. Rather than judging the person, judge the force and say, oh, yep, there's a producing force. What does it need? Well, it needs help in removing obstacles. Once those obstacles are removed, it can produce again. I don't need to incentivize this person or ensure that they're working hard enough. By nature, they're going to go and work hard and accomplish and fight to get it done. All they need to do is help them remove obstacles. But now contrast that with another staff member who comes in your office. And this time, this person's moving more slowly, more methodically. They're struggling to make sense of all the change that's happening in the environment. Don't judge the person. Judge the force. Say, hey, that's the stabilizing force. What do I need to give it? Well, I need to give it data. I need to give it time to analyze that data. Now, once that person with a high stabilizing force gets the data they need and time to process it, they'll come back with a very clear orderly plan to make sense of things and to bring some order out of all the chaos that's happening. Now, let's contrast that with another style that comes into your office. Here comes a big innovator. They're excited. Why are they excited? They have a new idea, right? They want to share that with you and get excited. Now, you might be overwhelmed with all the tasks that you have to do, but don't judge that person. Judge the force. Say, hey, look, here comes the innovating force. I give the force what it needs. So you get excited with that force. You talk about the idea. And what you'll notice is that high innovator style talks through the idea. They'll start to get more accepting of it. They'll start to become aware of all the details and intricacies of it. But if you give the force what it needs, that innovating style has a chance to work its way through and that person can be more grounded and focused once again. Last example, a high unifying style comes into your office. Now guess what? This person's gonna be feeling either up and engage, they want to talk to you, they want to learn about you, what's happening in your life. So you don't judge that person, you give the force what it needs. You spend some time connecting with them, talking about their personal life, connecting. Now, it could be that they come into your office and they're feeling really uh, disempowered and what they're focused on is how everyone else is feeling and emotional dynamics and problems happening in the team. So again, you don't judge the force, you give the force what it needs. They need empathy, they need you to listen and connect. Now, once you give the force what it needs, that force has a chance to move through. That employee, that staff member, now has an opportunity to be more grounded and focused and execute on their daily tasks. None of this is to say that management is easy, it's hard, but if you don't give the force what it needs, there's no breakthrough. The status quo remains. So these are the four styles of management. The producer, the stabilizer, the innovator, and the unifier. Now, all of us have some mix of these styles at work within us but we prefer, we tend to express one or two styles more than the others. Okay, what did you get from the video? Uh -huh. Any comments and opinions? In my case, I am not I'm not leader. Uh, I'm not. I'm not have a position of leader. But uh, a few years ago, I was. I worked as a business administration. Yeah, I think uh, my style is uh, producer. Producer uh, manager. manager. Pro producer style. Okay, producer. According, according, According to the who who think we think we saw. Okay, very good, interesting, nice. Uh, any other comments or opinion about the video that we just watched? Yeah, the 
the, the, the person say uh, the different side, the administrators, is uh, the job the manager is so hard for, for him. That is true. It's not easy. It's, I mean, every day is a challenge, right? And you have to think about the month, the uh, quarter metrics. I mean, it's, it's, it's difficult. It's not that easy. But yeah. it's good also. I mean, it's interesting as well. Very good. Any other opinion or comments about the meeting? He is talking about four, four ways to administrate, like a producer style, stabilizer style, innovation style, and unifer style. Very good. So, yeah, I mean, uh, you remember that we saw other styles, right? These are different styles. So that happens sometimes they are kind of different, but they are related, right? And it's very interesting what he says. I mean, he said, uh, yeah, we can combine, we can have part of one and the other style, but it's one or maybe two that are the ones that are the predominant, right? the one that we are part of that. Good. Any other opinion on the video? Okay, so we're going to continue then with the class. These are job profiles uh, regarding managers. So let's read about these job profiles so we can check what is those, what are those about, okay? So the first one, uh, Ivan Petrovich, could you please help me reading the first one? Okay. Advertising, promotion, and marketing managers. Media annual salary, uh, US dollar um, 133, right? Yeah. 133 and 380. 133,000. Okay, excuse me. 100,000. Yeah. Okay. Uh, job upload project uh, grown from uh, 20, 20, 20, and 21. To 20 and 30, 31, uh, 10 percent as an advertisy promotion or marketing manager. You help companies promote their products and service through strategic campaigns. You are typically need a bachelor's degree in marketing, communicators, or advertising to quality for this type of positions. Before becoming a manager, you may both work experience as a sales representative, buyer or public relations specialist. Okay, so uh, what did you understand about this uh, manager? Mm, the, the salary is, is, is more, is more expensive. <laughs> Very good, right? Imagine that the, they say, do you speak English? If you speak English, you can be an advertising, promotion, and marketing manager. And they say, you are going to earn $133,380. Uh, I made, actually, I was checking that one. Every month, if that is the annual salary, every month you earn uh, $11,115. That's good, right? It's a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. So I, I I would like to get that job. <laughs> sure. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Teacher. Uh -huh. I have a question. Go with ahead. A, uh, this is, say, bachelor degree. Mm -hmm. Bachelor degree is equit, equ equivalent. Uh, uh, it's similar to to uh, uh, licenciatura in El Salvador, or is uh, something like different? that. No, it's something like that. The only difference is that in English, the uh, the degrees are in four years, so you are a bachelor in four years, and you can four get years. a bachelor from a college. Yeah, from from university. Ah, uh, okay. 
Hey, it's good. It's good salary for for this work. Yeah, I mean, when say, uh, uh -huh, when say job outlook, uh, they they say project grown uh, and ten uh, percent job outlook. What do you mean with the with us outlook? Yeah, that means that uh, if you are, are, are a good manager in, uh, well, in that projection between these years, uh, you will be able to go to a different position to, to continue growing the company. Oh, mm -hmm. I want I want work here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's good. I mean, this kind of job profiles are, are very nice. Uh, and if we check about what are your duties, you can see that it's interesting. I mean, as an advertising, promotions, or marketing manager, you help companies promote their products and services through strategic campaigns. So that's what you do. You create campaigns for companies. So you have to be creative, right? You have to, to come with very interesting ideas depending on, on what they the companies they want to do, right? Mm. Then says, you'll typically need a bachelor's degree in marketing, communications, or advertising to qualify for this type of position. Definitely. You need to know the knowledge, so you need to have that. Before coming uh, becoming a manager, you may build work experience as a sales representative, buyer, or public relations specialist. So in my mind, very good this profile because it's telling you if you want to be a, a manager like this, first you can go and be a sales representative, a buyer, or a public relations specialist. So you can learn. And then once you learn, you can go and check if you can be a marketing manager. Good. Uh, do you have any questions here? Any word, vocabulary, pronunciation questions? Anybody? How do you say this number, the salary? The word salary or the number? The number. Yeah, the number is 133,380. Uh, okay, any other question? Could you repeat, please? Yeah, the number is 133,380. Thank you. You're welcome. Numbers are very important because imagine that you are in your job and you say a number that is not correct. Oh my goodness, that's not good, right? So we need to practice that whenever we have the chance. It's very important. It's very good that you are asking questions about that. Any other question? Any other word? Or vocabulary pronunciation. Teacher, how do you say anuncio anuncio de trabajo? Is is the is this picture, right? Uh yes, it's like a job offering. Job offer. Yeah, a job offering. Yeah, you can say that. Or okay. they, they also they say there is a position, an opening position. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other question? Okay, very good. Let's go to the next profile. I have a few. Let's see how it goes. This is construction manager. Very popular for Salvadorian training in the United States. So let's see. Osvin Alexis, please help me reading this one. Sorry, teacher. Um, I'm reading? Yeah, please read. Okay, and construction manager. Uh, typically divide their time between the office and a construction site. In this role, you may set budget hire subcontractor or crew members. Oversee their work and adjust plan to meet the deadline. Deadlines. Deadline depending on your employer. 
you may need a bachelor degree in construction business or engineering along with experience as a skilled worker or intern in the construction field. Very good. So what opinion do you have about this, uh, this uh, job profile? Uh, teacher, in, in this case, um, this many these managers, uh, they is they they are in a um, part time on the office and part time on the field. That is true. That is true. Yes, yeah, sometimes they have to go and check the plans, uh, budget, numbers, uh, deadlines, things like that one. Uh, and then they have to go to the field and check that everything is going well, right? So supervising is a very important part, but also uh, the anal analytic part, right? So very good. And uh, well, look at that. It says median annual salary is $98,890. That, according to the calculator, is $8,240 every month. Nice, right? That is not that bad. I mean, the other one was pretty good, but this one is, is good as well. And it says, uh, job outlook projected growth from 10 years and is 8% of probability. So, and it says construction managers typically divide their time between the office and the construction site. That's why you were saying like that. It's half here and half there. In this role, you may set budgets. Do you remember what is a budget? Yeah, budget is an instrument for uh, uh, study costs, uh, uh, increase and costs in the, in the company. That is it. So yes, when you, depending on the incomes, you are going to check what are the outcomes, right? So it's a money wise thing. A higher so contractors, what is to hire? Hire. Hire is a... Uh, 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 hire a uh, people, hire a uh, people for in the in this case is a uh, work in the constructions. Very good. It's to contract somebody, right? To say, hey, you are gonna work with me. so you hire, and in this case, so contract because there are other small companies that they have uh, the skills and the uh, the resources to to build things. Sometimes the money construction they uh what they do is this they they get other teams so they can work our crew members what is crew anybody knows it's like the team of Very work good. that's it's like the team so crew are similar like stuff stuff is for office and crew is like for a general work right for movement of things and things like that so it says oversee their work. What is oversee? Is out of their work. Yeah, it's to watch, to to check that everybody's doing their job. Very good. And I just plans to meet deadlines. What is deadlines? The last the last day that you have to do something, I think. Very good. So a deadline is when somebody says to you, you have until this day for you to finish, right? So you know that you have a week or a month or a year to finish a project. That is a deadline. So for example, for us, uh, I gave you a deadline for you to finish the platform. You will have to finish on that day. Because if you don't finish that day, it's not possible to, to finish it. Okay, then it says, depending on your employer, you may need a bachelor's degree in construction, business, or engineering, along with experience as a skilled worker or intern in the construction field. So yes, you need the studies. You need to, to know things and also the experience, because I mean, only the paper in this kind of works is not good enough. You need to have the experience as well. Uh, do you have any questions about this slide? 
pronunciation or meaning about, about the word oversee is like a supervise. Very good. It's like supervise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other question? I don't repeat me the number. The of exam. course. Yeah, it's ninety eight thousand eight hundred ninety. Yeah, ninety eight thousand eight hundred ninety. Eight hundred ninety. 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 Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other question? Any other? Along with. Mm -hmm. Along with. Yeah, those are prepositions. The the one uh, I remember we discussed that one. When you go along with, it's like when you are moving next. To each other, so that is a lot. Any other uh, pronunciation or vocabulary question? Teacher, uh, what is pronunciation? Bachelor, bachelor, right? Bachelor. 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 Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to the next one. Let's see how it goes. This is financial managers, okay? This is going to be for, let's see. Um, Lucy, Natalie. Hello, teacher. Hello. Uh, yeah, you are going to help us reading. Is possible for you to read? Okay. okay. Yes. Financial managers, median annual salary, um, one hundred thirty-one and seventy hundred. Um, ten, sorry. Job outlook projected ground from two thousand twenty-one to two thousand thirty-one. 17% as a financial manager, you may work in various environments where you analyze data, create financial reports, and help in, and help individuals or companies set and meet financial, financial goals. Before pursuing this career, you'll need a bachelor degree in accounting, finance, business, or economics. In some cases, you may want to earn industry certification as well. You can work your way up into this role through experience as a loan officer, an accountant, or similar position within a company. Okay, what did you understand here? What did you get from this job? Um, this is a um, this is an economic job area, and that are. That ones are the um purpose or the objective for um for obtain that that job or the focus topics to, for for that job. Okay, so something like that one, right? This is definitely something regarding with money, financial managers. Uh, the median annual salary is $131,710. Okay, so that, uh, I made the math already, that is going to be $10,975 every month. In mind that, $10,000 every month, almost $11,000 actually. Ah, that is a very good job. But also is a, it's not, that difficult, but it's stressful, I guess. This is very stressful. Money is always stressful. So, and says, as a financial manager, you may work in various environments where you analyze data. So this is the first thing. You need to analyze data. So you see the numbers, the figures, the graphics, and you understand, right? Create financial reports, Def. This is something that you need to do. And help individuals or companies set and meet financial goals out, of course. That's the main purpose, right? 
before pursuing this career, uh, what is pursuing? Anybody knows? Could be cursar, I don't say. Mm, it's not that one. Pursuing is like when you are going after something. So that is pursuing, when you are chasing. It's like a following, this following. Following, very good. So that would be so. So before pursuing this career, you'll need a bachelor's degree in accounting, finance, business, or economics. That is for sure. Yeah, you need to know. You need to have something like that. In some cases, you may want to earn industry certification as well. In the US, that happens. I mean, uh, in health, for example, or a lawyer. A lawyer has to have different certification depending what they're going to do. So the same happens for this. You cannot uh, handle or be a financial manager, for example, for a bank if you don't have a certification for banks. So that is a must. And then it says you can work your way up into this role through experience as a loan officer, an accountant, or similar positions within a company. So your way up, of course, is the way that you are going to continue growing with income. That will be it. And then the other one says a loan officer. What is loan? Anybody knows what is loan? It's when you receive some money that you have to pay in, in other time. That is a loan. Very good. When you go to the bank and you ask for money and they say you, yes, we're gonna give you money so you can pay every month this amount of money back, right? So that would be it. Good, good. Do you have any questions on this one? Pronunciation questions or vocabulary? Pronunciation is... is that. I'm sorry? The pronunciation is pursing. Pursuing. Pursuing. Uh, pursuing. 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 Good. Any other question? Good. Let's go to the next one. This is this word pursuing. You you say is is after that when you are going after something. Yeah, after something. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, there is another word that is similar to this one that is chasing, chase something or somebody. Pursuing it's, is it's when. Richard, uh -huh. it's your question, in the. In the context, the 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 job offers offers uh, say you may want to earn industry certification as well. Mm -hmm. uh, certification industrial como bueno o como aceptado. What is what is the meaning? Yeah, the thing is that depending on the industry that you are going to work, meaning the financial sector, for example. I mean, it's not the same to be the financial manager of a construction uh, or that a bank. Right? For a bank, you need to, to know more. You need to, to specialize, let's say. So in the US, for example, if you are going to work with a, in a bank, even if you have a bachelor degree in economics, for example, you have to also finish a, a certification for that industry, for the bank industry specifically. So that is the meaning of this. So depending on the kind of company that you're going to work, you uh, don't, uh, I mean, it's not only the career, but also the certification that you need. Mm -hmm. okay. That would be it. Good, any other question? Okay, let's move on. The next one says, Food service managers. And it says median annual as well. No, somebody's not on it, right? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Christian Alexander.
Look, teacher. Hello, can you read? I, I am, for now, you don't need the class, but what is the activity? Uh, yes, you need, uh, we are talking about some job files. If you have the chance, uh, is it possible for you to read? I read, it. yes. Yeah. Okay. Food service manager. Median annual salary. Uh, Fifty nine thousand forty four hundred forty dollars. Job outlook project grow from twenty twenty one to twenty three one. Ten percent. Food service manager work in restaurants, cafe, terries. What is the pronunciation? Cafeterias, yeah. Cafeterias and hotels. Overseeing kitchens and wait staff. In this position, you may create schedule orders, supplies, and ensure employees follow full safely guidelines. Guidelines. Although you can usually enter this field with a high skill diploma or equivalent. You may find it helpful to earn a degree in hospitality, a hospitality management, or culinary studies. You likely need some experience working in a restaurant as a cook, waiter, or food supervisor. Okay, what is your opinion about this uh, this job? Mm, I think that it's a uh, well, uh, seeing here in El Salvador or United States. Well, I think that is a good question. In general, yeah. Mm, uh, I think that is a good opportunity. Uh, you can find a job, and it's not a. Uh, you don't have to 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 get a high level degree, for example, or specialized in some areas, specific areas. But it's a good job. But I think that it's a, a hard job. Definitely, yeah. This is not. I mean, something that you say is very important. It's not specialized. I mean. Uh, maybe, yes, you have to know a little bit about food or uh, culinary things, management, uh, healthy things, but not a big deal. I mean, yeah, you have to know something, but not not some things that are very, very specialized. Uh, but it's a hard job. And the payment is less than the other ones. So $59,440 every month, that is... Four thousand seven hundred three dollars, so almost five thousand dollars in the U.S. Of course, how much do you know? How much is this uh, job in El Salvador? For example, for people in McDonald's, or Pizza Hut, the food service mm -hmm. money. The minimum salary, I think. Really? Yeah, for minimum. for the op 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 the operators, but the manager, I think that is. Like two salaries, around seven hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Around or 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 less, maybe, in some case. Okay, very good. So yeah, I believe that there is something like that. That is not that bad for the Salvador, but it's not that good. I mean, life is very expensive. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is it. It it depends. Okay. It depends if you work in San Salvador is better. Yeah, that is a, a something that is true. I mean, that's why. I always have worked in San Salvador because here, I, I, I live in Santa Ana. In Santa Ana, I mean, the salaries are very, very bad. I don't know. It's, it's not good. Uh, that's why sometimes, for example, today, if you checked, I was driving and I was in class right because I was coming from San Salvador. But there are no good opportunities in San Salvador. And that is true. Um, salaries are not the same. From the company to company, they're different, and also from city to city. So that happens. 
Okay, and it says food service managers work in restaurants, factories, and hotels, overseeing kitchen and wait staff. Of course, wait is like waiter or waitress, right? So that would be overseeing. Do you remember what is overseeing? Like uh, supervising the, the, the activity. Nice. So you need to supervise that. In this position, you may create schedules. What is a schedule? Maybe. To organize the time. Very good. When you, in a calendar, for example, organize your time. And then it says order supplies. What do you understand by order supplies? It's, it's like... Uh... The, the the people uh um uh, how do you say um uh, receive in the in the restaurants but uh, I am I am a, a customer I am I am a customer in the restaurant I go to the restaurant um uh, where is the where is the the word uh, pedir solicitar order 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 Okay. Yeah, so like that one, right? So when you order, not only from the customer, but sometimes you need to order also materials, resources for the people to cook or to prepare everything, right? So, and ensure employees follow food safety guidelines. That is a very important part. So, I mean, you are in a kitchen with hot oil, a lot of things that are kind of dangerous. So you need to be careful. Right. Although, what is although? I believe that that is impossible to say that in, in English, but in Spanish, do you know what is although? Okay. Okay, okay, very good. Although you can usually enter this field with a high school diploma or equivalent, you may find it helpful to earn a degree in hospitality management or culinary studies. That is true. I mean, yeah, if you are going to work in Subway or Pizza Hut, only the high school diploma, right? High school diploma is like bachillerato here, right? So that would, be. so, but if, for example, if you want to work as a full service manager in uh, a big hotel in Salvador, right? probably high school is not enough. You need to have, you need to have some studies on management or in cooking or anything. You likely need some experience working in a restaurant as a cook, waiter, or food prep supervisor. So yes, experience here is a must. You need to have these kind of things, okay? Uh, do you have any questions on this slide? Pronunciation yeah, question? What is, what is hospital, hospitality management? Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, well, uh, you can go to the university and learn how to manage hospitality. I mean, welcome, Mr. Kostbeck. Do you want this? Do you need this other thing? So, yeah, it's part of a study that you can you can take some courses, some things like that. Want. Any other question? Just a question, what, teacher. What is? Go ahead, go ahead. Uh -huh. Lady. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just a question. If I'm not wrong, I remember waiter is for men and waitress is for woman, right? Exactly. Okay, so where, where do you... Oh, when do you use this word for the exactly? Okay, for example, here in the reading it says wait staff. So you, you can say that, that the wait staff is all together, women and men. Okay, so you can say that, that when you want to speak about everybody in general. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other question? I, huh? wait, waiter is for both woman and Men. 
No, a waiter is for men. Waitress is for women. Mm -hmm. Teacher, este, what kind, what kind of study is a culinary studies? Culinary studies is cook, cooking. Ah, cooking. Yeah, but the thing is that it's not only by cooking, right? But you know that you can go to to the university or to the school of cooking or, or chefs, and you can learn how to cook. I don't know Latin American food uh, or Asian food or uh, desserts, cakes, and things. Like that. So there are different areas inside of this, right? Okay, thank you. Okay, good. Uh, any other questions? Uh, teacher, what is the meaning of that number after the amount salary? Uh, the number five is in this okay. ranking that we're checking is the number five in this reading. Oh. That is it. Teacher. Yep. If you want to say, digamos, después del 20, 31, dos puntos, ¿cómo lo diría? En inglés. Cool. Column. Column, I see. So column. one column, 10%. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, actually, we are going to, uh, this is a good thing. Uh, we are going to do an activity. Let me think. I don't remember. I guess it's going to be next week. Uh, we're going to do a dictation. In the dictation, I'm going to say period, for example. So you put the period, right? Comma. Uh, this one, the one that you are asking, uh, dos puntos is column. Punto y coma is semicolon. Uh, parentheses or brackets, uh, quotation marks, all those words are very important for you to, when you are going to detect to understand what you need to do, right? Good, good. Uh, any other questions? Okay, let's check. The next one says medical and health services manager. Okay, this is going to be for, let me check. Kenya Cecilia. Okay, medical and health service managers. Medium annual salary. Um, one under one. Thousand three three hundred four okay. job outlet prior growth from two thousand twenty one to two thousand three one twenty eight percent as a medical or health service manager you may work in a doctor office hospital, rehab, facility, or similar environment where you may supervise a coordinate healthcare provider and support staff work. You'll need a, a last a bachelor degree in healthcare administ administration or nursing. And many people in this role also have a master degree. In addition to the degree, you may consider working in a variet, variety right. of, of related position like administrative an administrative assistant, billing clerk, or medical record, especially to Gain okay. work experience. Very good, perfect. So uh, that is going to be uh, the medical and health service models. What uh, What is your opinion about this position, Sam? Um, what do you think, Cecilia? Nothing the at position, all. Well, the, the okay. position is a... <laughs> it's an interesting position and have a good salary. 
and Very they good. increase that you can obtain during 10 years is is big because it's 28 percent yeah it's a very good increase, right? So that is nice. Yes, it's a very good increase. Okay. So, yes, this is, uh, as you can see, this is very specialized, right? It's not for, I mean, you need to study something. The salary is good. I mean, 1,340, 1, that is, uh, tells you 8,445 a month. So, 8.5. That is a good salary. That is good. Uh, and then it says, as a medical or health services manager, you may work in a doctor's office. So that is the difference. Here is like the person that helps uh, in the doctor's office, that manages, but it's not a doctor's office. Hospital rehab facility. Do you know what is a rehab facility? Okay, this is like a clinic for people that have an addiction. So if you're addicted to cigarettes or to bag or to things like that one, you can go to one of these clinics that is called rehab or rehab facility. So you get better into that one. Or similar environment where you may supervise and coordinate healthcare providers and support staff's work. So in this case, you don't work exactly with the doctor, but you, you work with the nurses, with uh, people that help and clean up. You need at least a bachelor's degree in healthcare administration or nursing, at least. And many people in this role also have a master's degree. So that is very common. You really want to be a manager, you need to go and check a degree. In addition to the degree, you may consider working in a variety of related positions like administrative system, billing clerk. Do you know what is a billing clerk? No. Okay, in a company, a billing clerk is the person that is in charge of, of the billing, of the payments that we have to do. So all the payment has to be on time. So that is the billing clerk. Okay, and then it says all medical records, specialists to gain work experience. So first, you have to have all these studies and also you have to have experience. Definitely this is something that you have to have. Okay, do you have any questions on pronunciation or vocabulary? Teacher, in the, in the, in the second uh, sentence, uh, say, uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, where it's a doctor office, hospital, Riyadh facility. Riyadh. Uh, what is the pronunciation of this word? A rehab. Rehab. Rehab facility. Rehab facility. Uh -huh. Good. Teacher. Good. Okay. Teacher. Uh -huh. Billing. Billing clerk is a person that made the invoice. It's no. the person that manages the invoices. So that means that uh, they receive those ones and they uh, speak with accounting so they can pay for that one. They are in charge that everything is paid on time. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other question? Just a... Uh... What do you mean with medical records, especially? But because for me, records are is like filming. So mm. I don't know if it is the same or change the word because of the stress of the sounds or I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yes. Actually, it's different. The other one is records, and oh this one goodness. is records. Uh -huh. Are you okay? <laughs> Okay, just as the just as the sound of the stress of the word, it changed the meaning. Definitely. So it's totally different. A record in this case is like um how can I say that? Uh it's something that is saved. For example, imagine that you go to the doctor, 
and then you, uh, I mean, you have a problem with your stomach, let's say. And he says, okay, I'm going to check you, I'm going to give you this medicine and things like that. Okay, and you are fine. Uh, in six months, you come back to the doctor and he opens the records and he says, ah, you came here the last time for the stomach, right? And I gave you this and this and this. So there is the record there inside. So it's when you save uh -huh. in when you save information about something. Oh, I got it. Got it. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Any other questions about this? No questions. All right. The other one is sales manager, one of the most common one here. Yeah. This one is going to be for, let's see, Daniel Archimedes. Okay. Sales manager, median annual salary. One, one hundred, I don't know, I can't read the, 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 this amount. One thousand, one hundred, let me see. 27. <laughs> One twenty-seven hundred thousand. One twenty-seven thousand forty nights dollar. Job outlook projects grow from twenty twenty-one to twenty thirty-one. Five percent. Sales manager supervises the team of sales professional in an organization. As a sales manager, you can expect to set goals as quotas for individual sales representatives and teams and tracks their progress. You may be called upon to speak with customer and handle complaints. You may need a bachelor of degrees to qualify for this type of position, but sometimes having experience as a salary representative or buyer can be used as important. Okay, what is your opinion on this position? Sound nice uh, this position, sales manager, uh, but it's a boss that's guided the other person. Sound like a, a call center. Call center. The, because we are the best. Uh, I think it's just like <laughs> this, I think. Uh, but in El Salvador, I think that the salad manager don't, don't, don't get this salary. It's a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. But it's a lot of money. But I think it's a it's good uh, position in in this world. But uh, you need to you don't need a lot of the studies of uh, others diplomas. Only let me see. Only need to have uh, You need to study a bachelor degrees, and you need to qualify for this position. Oh, that is interesting. Yeah. I think I think only in the US you can uh, get uh, this kind of salary. But in El Salvador in another country, I think no. That is possible. It's my yes. opinion about it. very good. Thank you, Daniel. So you are in uh, the US, yes, that is the money that you're going to get in a regular company, not in a big company. A big company is a lot of money. I mean, there are sales managers that they have, I don't know, $3 million every year. So that's a lot of money. But here in El Salvador, they want to pay you $700. That's too much, they say. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, uh, this is a lot. So $127,490. And that is $10,000. 624. That's a lot of money. Almost eleven uh hundred dollars a month. That is a lot of money. And uh, it says sales managers supervise 
team of sales professionals in an organization. Definitely, that is the most important, right? As a sales manager, you can expect to set goals and quotas for individual sales representatives. Okay, set goals. You know what is that one, right? What is to set goals? It's like to establish some, some points to achieve. Very good. So you establish where you want to go. What are the goals, right? And this is quotas for individuals. So part of the goals, I mean, in mind that, in mind that we say that every month we have to, to do, uh, I don't know, $10,000 of sales. And if we are 10 people, that means that the quota, the individual quota is $1,000 per salesperson. $1,000 per person. That is the quota. So you have the goal and you divide that one to the people and that is the individual quota. That would be it. Okay, and then it says uh, in teams and track their progress. Again, not only set the goals, right? But check if they are actually doing things. And then it says, uh, you may be called upon to speak with customers in housing complaint. Also, that is another thing that happens, right? So when the people, you know, in the United States, it's very common that people, so if they are not happy about the service, they say, I want to speak with the manager. So you are the manager, right? So you have to go and speak with this angry customer. And then it says you uh, may need a bachelor's degree to qualify for this type of position. But sometimes having experience as a sales representative or buyer can be just as important. So yes, the school studies is important, but also the experience. And also I would say the attitude. I mean, what you what you do, that is also very important. For that. I mean, there are people that they are natural salespersons. These people are very good for this kind of job. Do you have any questions about this pronunciation or uh, vocabulary questions? I think in this uh, time, maybe for sales managers, it's different because uh, for example, my nephew is being trained as a sales manager and he is an industrial engineer. Yeah, I, here in Salvador, you know, they are very open. You can be, uh, the most common is uh, an industrial engineer or or uh, administrator. Maybe an accountant, but it's not a common. But at the end, uh, here, Anybody can be a sales manager. If you have the attitude to sell, and you have the experience, and you can lead a, a team, they give you the opportunity. Yes. Any questions here? You can handle, handle complaints. Handle complaints, yeah. Handle is to manage, it's a synonym. Complaints is when you don't like something. For example, I have a complaint, this uh, product is not good, it's not working, right? but that is a complaint. When somebody comes, say that they are not satisfied about something. Mm. Any other question? Okay, let's check the other one. I guess we have, I don't know, we don't have more. Okay, very good, very nice. So we're going to actually continue with the book. And the book is here, all right. So how to use defining relative clauses. Okay, and it says, uh, of course, we are in the same unit, management. Um, look at the examples in the box. Okay, let's see. Um, Erica, could you please help me reading the chart? 
Of course, let me see it. Okay, look at examples in the box, then complete the exercise below. Uh, when the relative pronoun is the object of the defining relative class, it is, it is usually omitted. Continue? Yes, please. Okay, he is the lawyer that the manager met at the meeting. He is the lawyer, Marana, the manager meet at the meeting. Continue? Yes, please. Okay. They are some of the people that Rockefeller par partnered, partnered? Partnered. With. Partnered with. They, they are some of the people who Rockefeller partnered with. When the relative pronoun is the subject of the clouds, it cannot be om omitted. He is the lawyer who signed Sign. the I'm sorry, sign the contract. You can usually tell when a relative pronoun is the object of the clause because it is followed by another subject plus verb. The lawyer that I hired did not do a good job. That is a relative pronoun which can be used with people or things. The lawyer that I hire did not do a good job. Please make a copy of the contract that I signed Fine. yesterday. <laughs> Sign. I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Okay. okay, so this is the grammar for today. So, uh, when the relative pronoun, remember that the relative pronoun is that, who, whom, whose. Those are the relative pronouns, okay? Uh, so, when the relative pronoun is the object of the defining relative clause, it is usually omitted. So, here is very important to remember the difference between subject and object in a sentence. Remember that the subject is the person that does the action. And the object is the person who receives the action. That is it. It's the only thing, okay? So when the relative pronoun is the object, so the one that receives the action, you can delete the relative pronoun. So for example, he is the lawyer that manager met at the meeting. In this case, he is the lawyer, is the subject. And then the other one is the object. So, since he's the object, we can say he is the lawyer, the manager met at the meeting. That, we can delete that. We cannot use that. And the sentence is the same. Anyway. The other example says, they are some of the people that Rockefeller partnered with. They are some of the people, Rockefeller partner. So if you listen to that one, it's the same. There is no change in the meaning. If you delete the, the relative problem. Do you have any questions on this part? Okay, sure. uh, go ahead. Would you give more example, please? With another sentence? Uh, yes, it's like, um, what can I say? Uh, they are the ones that will receive the diploma, for example. Or oh, they are the ones, they are the ones will receive the diploma. Not that, that will be it. So uh, remember that in this case, there are two sentences that are getting together. So if that is referring to the person that receives the object, I mean, to receive the action, we can delete it. Maybe it's better if we go to the next one. It says, when the relative pronoun is the subject of the clause, it cannot be omitted. So he is the liar who signed the contract. Look at that. He is a liar who. So he did it. The who is related to the first person. He is the lawyer who signed the contract. And in the other sentences, He's a lawyer that the manager met. So the manager met is like the object. And that is referring to the object. 
not that he is the language. So that is the main difference. So if we're speaking or we're using that or who to speak about the object, the one who receives the action, we can delete it. But if it's the person that does the action, it cannot be deleted at all. So I believe that that part is, is better. You understand a little bit better in that way. Do you have any questions in this first two parts? So teacher, the, he is the lawyer, the manager met at the meeting, it is correct, right? Is oh yeah, that is correct. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, the other one says you can usually tell when a relative pronoun is the object of the class because is it followed by another subject. Ah, that is the key. The lawyer that I hired did not do a good job. Look at that. So this is the key. So if you wonder, if you are thinking when, when am I going to delete that? When am I going to delete the relative pronoun? Okay, we're going to delete this one when the next word is another subject. So we can say, if we say here, if we have here that she or that he or that the man or that my mother. So if after that one here, there is a subject, we can, yes, it's possible to delete that. Look at this. He says, he's the guy who signed. So here, this is a verb. It's not a subject. So that is the key. How to know if you are going to delete or if it's possible to delete this word. If the next word is a subject, then yes, we can delete this. But if the next word is a verb or an adjective or any other word, you cannot delete this word. So that is the key. Do you have any questions on that? Can you do an uh, example? Uh, yeah, we can check into that. Actually, we can do the exercise together, but let's check the last part, okay? That is a relative pronoun which can be used with people or things. That is very easy. The lawyer that I hired did not do a good job. So this is another one, right? In this case, this is the question that you need to ask. If after that, I have a subject, yes, I can delete it. So in this case, my friends, can I delete that or not? What do you think? I can delete the word that or not? I think not. Actually, yes. Si parte de lo que estamos viendo ahorita es esto. La relative pronoun uh, se puede usar para objeto o sujeto. Creo que se ha estipulado. Pero un truco para poder saber cuándo yo puedo borrar esta palabra, que puede ser that, puede ser who, es si después de esa palabra, aquí hay un sujeto. Entonces, si analizamos todas estas oraciones, por ejemplo, si aquí hay un sujeto, al, al, después del, del dat, yo la puedo borrar. Por ejemplo, el manager. A es un sujeto. Entonces, si la puedo borrar, puedo dejar todo en blanco. En esta otra, Rockefeller. Ah, Rockefeller es un sujeto, es una persona. Entonces, sí la puedo borrar. Aquí dice, firmó. Ah, no hay un sujeto. No la puedo Aquí... Dice, ay, sí es un sujeto, yo. Entonces, sí la puedo borrar. Aquí está ay también. Entonces, sí la puedo borrar. Igual aquí está ay y sí la puedo borrar. Eso es lo único importante de este cuadrito. ¿Cuándo yo puedo borrar el relative pronoun? Ah, cuando después del relative pronoun hay un sujeto. Yo, ella, María el hombre que siempre me viene a vender sorbete, todos esos son sujetos. Encontramos que los sujetos también pueden ser cosas, el perro, la mesa, cosas por el estilo. Pero si después de eso va un verbo, un adjetivo, un adverbio, 
no puedo borrar el relative, que es este, ¿verdad? Who o el that, no lo puedo borrar. Solo si después de eso va un sujeto. Uh, do you have any questions? Yes, I'm a little confused. I'm sorry. Es fácil. Lo que pasa es de que solo tienen que ver la fórmula. O sea, cuando ustedes están haciendo una oración con un relative pronoun, puede ser de muchas maneras. Hay 17 formas de, 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 este, tipo de, de este tipo de oraciones. Ahorita solo hemos visto una, ¿verdad? Esta es solo una. Eh, luego vamos a ir agregando reglas. Entonces, cuando ocupamos, vamos a empezar Vamos a hacer repaso de la clase de la semana pasada. ¿Cuándo ocupamos un relative pronoun? Cuando uno o dos oraciones. Cuando digo, por ejemplo, he is the lawyer that the mother met at the meeting. Aquí hay dos oraciones. He is the lawyer es una oración. Y uh, the mother met at the meeting es otra oración. Y para ponerla junto yo ocupo un relative. Por eso se llama relative pronoun. Porque relaciona. Este pronombre lo que hace es que relaciona dos oraciones. Esa es la primera idea que tenemos. ¿Tenemos alguna pregunta con esa primera parte? I no. Know, but it, it doesn't change the meaning of the sentence. Depende. I know he's a lawyer, but uh, for example, the, the, the last sentence. Please make a copy of the contract. I know that's, that's one sentence, but the another one I signed yesterday. For me, it doesn't have sense like a two different sentences. That ah, makes no lo... sense when I use that for me. En lo que pasa es de que como ya están unidas, si usted se acuerda cuando vimos aquí en la presentación, bueno, vamos a volver a poner, porque ese es el, el, el primer punto ese. Si usted no entiende lo primero, lo segundo no se, no se puede entender. ¿Dónde está? ¿Dónde está la gramática? Aquí está. Vaya. Aquí está, Amin. Daniel. Daniel was late again today. Daniel sits next to me in English. Pero yo cuando la uno ya digo, Daniel who was late again today sits next to me in English. Aquí ya le quito Daniel porque ya la uní. Ya no tiene que ser igual. Lo mismo en español. En español yo digo, eh, Carlos... A Carlos le gusta bailar. Carlos trajo zapatos nuevos. Carlos, a quien le gusta bailar, trajo zapatos nuevos. Ya no vuelvo a decir Carlos porque ya la uní. Ese es el objetivo del who, quien, quien también hace esto, yo lo uno. Es idéntico que en español. Lo que pasa es que no lo analizamos. Es idéntico. Pero no pongo las, o sea, yo no digo Daniel was there again, who Daniel sits next to. Ahí ya no tiene si yo lo digo así, el objetivo de ponerlas juntas es, es que sea una sola oración. No dos oraciones separadas. O sea, yo puedo tomar dos oraciones separadas, ponerlas juntas, pero como ya es una sola, cuando yo pongo who, hay partes que van a variar. No es exactamente la misma oración. Yo le hago arreglos para que sea una sola oración. Entonces, esta parte es la primera que tenemos que entender. La pregunta es si se entiende. That was the part exactly that I was confused about it. Because Pero es bien sencillo. Just to put uh -huh. the same, but it changed. Actually, it changed the, the, the uh -huh. Ajá, uh -huh. o sea, oh si, si, si cambia porque las tengo que poner juntas. Si yo las pongo unidas, idénticas, ahí ya no tiene sentido. ¿verdad? No tiene sentido. Entonces, eh, esa es una cláusula. Y cláusulas hay muchas, ¿verdad? Vamos a ver más adelante muchos tipos de cláusulas, pero sí hay que entender lo que es la cláusula. Dos oraciones o dos ideas que yo pongo juntas. That's it. Es muy simple, pero no puedo, o sea, como ya están juntas, tiene que tener sentido lo que estoy diciendo. Y para darle sentido es que ocupo ese, ese relative pronoun. ¿Quién? El, el qué, ¿verdad? Eso es. Entonces, de eso partimos para lo siguiente que es lo que tenemos aquí, que a veces, o sea, ya yo ya sé lo que es una relative, una cláusula, que es todo esto, dos oraciones unidas con el da o, o algo por el estilo, pero además de esa regla que ya vimos, que se puede unir, yo tengo que saber que el da lo puedo borrar o no lo puedo borrar, 
O sea, a veces se puede y a veces no. ¿Cuándo yo lo voy a poder borrar? Bien fácil. Yo vengo a ver la palabra relative noun, que sería that o que sería who, y busco la palabra que está después de esa palabra. Y si esa palabra es un sujeto, entonces yo sí la puedo borrar. Pero si esa palabra es cualquier otro tipo de palabra que no sea un sujeto, entonces no la puedo borrar. Entonces es el análisis que se llama aquí. That, y aquí dice the manager, esto es un sujeto, la puedo borrar. That, y luego dice Rockefeller, esto es un sujeto, la puedo borrar, por eso están aquí, las dos son correctas, esta es correcta. They are some of the people Rockefeller partnered with. Ahora, una cosa que sí tenemos que hacer es dejar de traducir. Si yo estoy traduciendo, no va a tener sentido. Eso es como cuando uh, alguien una vez me preguntó, mire, no entiendo ese, ese she went. ¿Y por qué no lo entiende? Porque nosotros decimos, ella se fue, y ese sé dónde va. No, ese en español, en inglés, no va, no existe. ¿Y por qué, pues, y por qué no lo tengo que poner? Pues sí, sí, es bien fácil, simplemente es otro idioma. No se puede poner exactamente como es. It's impossible, porque es otra lengua. ¿verdad? Nosotros al traducir, lo que hacemos es, es que eh, lo hacemos llegar a lo que nosotros diríamos. Así lo diría yo en español. Pero en inglés las reglas son diferentes. Lo mismo pasa, por ejemplo, cuando me preguntaban por la S en el presente simple. No es plural. She works. Así se conjuga el verbo. Pero no es un plural. Las mismas reglas del plural llevan esos verbos. Pero no es un plural. Lo mismo viene a pasar aquí. ¿Verdad? Que a veces, para, por ejemplo, esta es una cosa que quisiera, pudiera decirme a alguien, esto no tiene sentido si yo lo leo así. Ah, lo que pasa es que usted lo está traduciendo. Por eso el dat le hace falta. Si usted lo traduce, usted va a decir, y ahí no, 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 no pega, ¿verdad? Pero en inglés se puede. O sea, ese es el asunto. Que tenemos que decir lo que se puede y lo que no se puede. Y esto se puede. Y lo aprendemos y lo usamos. En base. Entonces, no es difícil si lo vemos así, como una lengua diferente, ¿verdad? sin traducirlo. Sí, nosotros podemos traducir cualquier cosa, pero solo hacemos, lo hacemos llegar al... Así lo diría yo en español, pero el orden de las palabras, los verbos, las cosas que se utilizan, hay cosas que van de más, hay cosas que van de menos. Because it's a different language. That is it. Ok, ¿hay alguna pregunta o duda con esto? Do you have any questions? So, teacher, in the last exercise, we have to use the clothes. The lawyer that I hired did not do that. A good job. Uh, in the last exercise. Uh, the law, the law, uh, the law, like, uh, eso está correcto. That's correct. Ah, yeah, okay. Si ninguna está incorrecta aquí, ninguna, todas están correctas. Aquí yeah. la pregunta que nos tenemos aquí, para estas oraciones, el objetivo es que te esté explicando uh, que el dat se ocupa para cosas y para cosas y para personas, pero no está en función de los demás. Aquí nos podemos analizar nosotros. Yo puedo borrar ese edad, sí o no. De acuerdo a lo que hemos aprendido, ¿qué dicen ustedes? ¿Lo puedo borrar o no lo puedo borrar? Yes, you can delete. ¿Se puede borrar? Sí, porque aquí está el aire, ¿verdad? Ahí está la regla. Si yo me prendo las reglas, ahí voy, ¿verdad? Ahí voy. Entonces, sí lo puedo borrar. E igual aquí, que hay un hay. Entonces, sí, este lo puedo borrar. O sea, que yo lo puedo usar esta oración de dos maneras. Please make a copy of the contract that I signed yesterday. O puedo decir, please make a copy of the contract I signed yesterday. ¿Verdad? Lo que pasa es que en español siempre decimos que, que firmé. Por eso ahí va el resumen. Pero uh, sí, es normal traducir, pero poco a poco tenemos que irlo dejando de lado. All right. Um, el ejercicio lo vamos a hacer mañana. Because tonight, the night is over, my friends. Ok. 
Eh, si no les queda muy claro, lo que yo puedo hacer es mandarle alguna actividad mañana para que la hagan, ¿les parece? Un Eso ejercicio, sí. una explicación. ¿verdad? Eh, sí, lo que pasa es que todos entendemos las cosas de diferentes maneras. ¿verdad? Eh, hay cosas que a mí me pueden costar y que a otro le pueden decir, no, eso es bien fácil. Y así es, ¿verdad? eso es normal. Don't worry. So we're going to check the attendance. Before we finish, do you have any questions? Ok, so Christian Alexander Arevalo Delgado. Daniel Antonio Luna. Present. Good. Daniel Arquímedes Florentino García. Present. Good. Eric H. Smith Martínez Carpio. Present. Good. Fátima Denise Aguilar Márquez. Present, teacher. Good. Germán Alexander Durán Linares. Héctor Francisco Morales Rico. Iván Petrovich Guzmán Aquino. Present. Good. Jamie Raquel Escobar Alfaro. Present. Good. Holman Saúl Girón Sánchez. Present. Good. José Alberto Baños Hernández. Carla Lorena Leiva Contreras. Present. Good. Kenia Cecilia Ruiz Morán. Present. Good. Lucy Natalie Juárez de Ramírez. Present. Good. Manuel Antonio Escamilla Jurado. Nelson Antonio Erroda Rosales. Present. Good. Osvin Alexis Flores Hernández. Present. Good. Samantha Marisol Campos Flamenco. Present. Good. Sulma Janet Ramírez Avalos. Present. Good. Vanessa Noemi Reyes Lemos. Present. Good. David Alexander Rodríguez Sánchez. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure. The one one of tonight is for Erica. And uh, see you tomorrow. Have a very good night. Rest very well and dream in English. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay, hello. I'm sorry I have the camera off because there is no light at my house, so <laughs> I'm really uh -huh. sorry. <laughs> no problem, no, not a problem. So, how is everything going? Actually, everything is better, everything is on the way because <laughs> I'm growing on my work, so very good. Is on the way. <laughs> That's very nice, very good. Congratulations, then. <laughs> Thank you. And okay, so uh, I see that you uh, you participate a lot. That is very good. So I have a question. Uh, how do you feel that you're moving with the classes? Do you feel that you are learning? Yes, actually, I think I'm learning. For to be honest, teacher, I have been learning English since I was 13 years old, but not in an academy, not in a school, not in a study with teachers, just learning through music, through theories, uh, reading, like that kind of, of learning <laughs> by myself, actually. So that's why sometimes, for to be honest, I used to use a lot that specific uh, topic, or for example, that uh, Daniel, for example, that he was a person, and chalala, and the rest of the sentences, and I, and I know how to speak it, but for the grammar, for to be completely honest, for the grammar, I'm completely lost. Because if you tell me, make a sentence with present perfect continuous, I didn't understand, I didn't know how to do it. Just if you give me an example, or if you 
tell me what to do it or maybe I'm talking and present perfect continuous and I don't know. And that's what I need for, to be honest, that's what I need. Because in my work, I used to uh, write a lot of letters or maybe talk with, uh, not with clients, but with customers. I'm sorry, not with customers, but with clients, I used to talk a lot. And sometimes I need to talk in English. So actually, <laughs> the first that I say when I'm talking to them is, I'm sorry if I said something wrong because English is not my first language, so I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the first sentences that I ever said. And they, and they know it and they understand it. And actually, they teach me sometimes how to say it better. But the grammar for me, for to be honest, if you put me to write in a specific grammar rule, I completely <laughs> lost for to be completely honest. Ah, but you speak very well. You are learning a lot and that is the most important part. For the grammar, you just need to try to understand, only to understand and then just continue speaking because you're doing a very good job. Sometimes it's a good idea to understand that one because, well, this is like math. If you don't understand this, then in the future, probably you are not going to be able to understand the, the rest, right? Uh, yes. But... But it's it's not difficult. I mean, it's very easy. You just identify the structure. That is the most basic part. The structure and why it's like that. And that's it. You move on. Yes, I hope so. <laughs> because grammar, actually, in, in Spanish, for me, it's difficult. <laughs> I think I can talk in Spanish. That's what I think. But I, when I heard someone else speaking in a different way, like mm, I don't talk in that way I can change uh, the way if am I that am I talking so that's what I what happened to me I think with the English because I yeah. hear I used to talk with consumers in, in English not all the time but more of the time and and I heard them and it's like oh that's a good way to say that or this or those things, and, I, and I'm learning, by the way, with them. Okay, no, but you're doing a very good job. So if you don't understand something, the only thing that you have to do is to practice, to look for resources, and that's it. It's going to be no big deal. And, and But don't don't stop and, and, and force that, I mean, because you are doing a very good job. So you speak very well. <laughs> Thank you so much. So the classes I'm going to uh, um, see it right now and <laughs> to find some videos on YouTube. Maybe I get it better, the idea, how to use it. But okay. I think I'm, how to say it? It's not on the way. It's another way. It's like on the road. <laughs> okay. Very good. I'm very happy that you, you are to that one. Uh, do you have any question, any, anything that I can help you with? Uh, actually, no, no. Maybe with the plan for, for, to be honest, I don't have enough time. I start working like at uh, 10 and a half a.m. and finish or go to home like at 6 or 7 p.m. and then I'm here and then the university and I don't have enough time. So I'm trying to work in the platform on weekends. Maybe Saturdays in uh, the afternoon or Sunday on the, on the morning, because for to be honest, I don't have enough time. But just to say that, I used to work on weekends on the platform. So that's why I'm on zero percent work on the platform right now. But I used to, I used to, we used to work maybe on class or on weekends. Okay. Yeah. If you, <laughs> if you are. Uh... Yeah, it's not it's not important that you do it every day, but you don't have to stop doing it. So if you do mm -hmm. it every Saturday, that is fine. Okay, yes. Yeah. Okay. For the rest of the class, it's okay. Your accent, it's it's actually I like it, your accent. <laughs> uh, thank you. Yeah, I like it. So okay. I hope I, I'm gonna learn a lot of I uh, definitely yeah. very sure that if you continue coming, it is going to be very good for you. So uh, it was a pleasure to be with you. Have a very good night and see you tomorrow. Good night. See you.
হুম বাই বাই বাই